Friends, welcome to my workplace at Rana Ghat, West Bengal, India. In this video, I want to show management of a posterior capsular rend that occurred during emulsification of the last nuclear fragment. And this is the most common moment where posterior capsular rend occurs. This is the last nuclear fragment and see what happens here. As soon as I try to catch hold of this last nuclear fragment, along with it, the posterior capsule is caught, demonstrated by four radial lines going towards the superior aspect. But I could not make out at that time, and I continued emulsifying this space. And here I could see there's a big posterior capsular end, but still there is no vitreous prolapse. And now, as soon as I, I have regurgitated something because I could, can, I, this is just to see if I hold something. And now as I inject visco and come out, see what happens. Vitreous prolapse occurs and the vitreous has come out through the main wound externally. So at this time I take help of this cotton tipped Janssen bud, use a sharp vana scissor to cut the vitreous strands flush with the external opening of the main incision. This cotton tipped Janssen bud helps a lot to identify the vitreous strands. Now it is done. By this time the cutter is ready. I'm going to use Oatly Catrix 3 FECO machine. It has got a pneumatic cutter and the cutting rate it offers is 1200 cuts per minute. And this is a beautiful instrument to manage posterior capsular end. This is a 23 gauze cutter and I am cutting the vitreous without irrigation. This is just not to hydrate the vitreous because if we hydrate the vitreous more prolapse of vitreous will occur. Now I don't want to allow this nuclear piece to sink so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the main wound and it, it will follow the flow of the fluid, the stream of the irrigating fluid. Yes, it has come out. And now along with it, some vitreous strands also has come out. So I sweep it like this and in this way I can cut the vitreous strands. And now I have I go a little behind the posterior capsule and do anterior vitrectomy. We should not place the cutter in the bag or in the anterior chamber. We must place the cutter few millimeters behind the posterior capsule so that we don't pull any vitreous towards the anterior chamber. Rather, whatever vitreous strands is there in the anterior chamber should go behind. This is the uh, right way of doing a limbal vitrectomy. Place the cutter few millimeter behind the posterior capsule, say three to four millimeter behind the posterior capsule and cut. And the cutter should be sharp. It should not pull only it should cut and pull. And once a significant amount of vitreous has been removed, it is the cutter is removed and now cortical cleanup will be very easy. Let us see how to remove the cortex. I am using a 23 the Simcoe cannula, what I'm doing is 
I am sh I don't want to sink any cortex into the vitreous so I am aspirating the cortex right there holding and aspirating right there and since there is no vitreous strands in the proximity so it is very easy to remove the cortex now go through the left side port and remove the cortex from the right side from 9 o'clock 10 o'clock now I go through the right side port and remove the cortex from the superior aspect from 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock these two are very important steps first manage the vitreous and then remove the cortex and then this portion of the video is edited I implanted a multi-piece intraocular lens in the sulcus I didn't use any tramsinolone acetate in this case I used pilocarpine I became sure sweeping the pupillary margin with a Sinsky hook like this and when I was sure that there is no vitreous strands I concluded the case forming, forming the anterior chamber very nicely this is a bit of moxifloxacin moxifloxacin is being used to hydrate the side ports now see how beautiful it becomes the post-off result if we manage PCRN nicely antechamber is quiet and vision of this patient was 6 by 12 on the first post-op day no corneal edema thank you very much for your attention hope this video will inspire you to manage posterior capsular rents very nicely I don't wish it happens in your hands but don't wish that problems shouldn't occur wish that you become more competent to manage any complications thank you very much for your attention